Here on the channel, our theory is that the markets as a whole are in a massive bubble. This bubble is only just getting started and things are going to get hectic. So the main thing that we need to be aware of and what we continue to track is one, will this bubble pop early? We're seeing a lot of comments and seeing a lot of uh, analysis out there suggesting that the bubble is getting ready to pop in 2024, specifically around April. So I think this is incorrect. The next thing is, if this bubble isn't going to pop early, how much time do we have left to accumulate degenerate altcoins? So I've got timing to get into in today's video when it comes to altcoins. I wanna look specifically at 5Xs, 10Xs, maybe even 36Xs. Uh, that's across LINK and LINK USD as a, an example, plus eight other altcoins to have a look at suggesting maybe we're seeing a slight rollover. I'll get to that later in the video. The main thing that we're gonna look at first up is our theory on the macro cycle, as of course, got, the, got it in there. This is your home of macro cycle analysis, studying the past to forecast the future. Hit that like and subscribe button. This is where you get your holistic view of the markets here on the channel. Bitcoin, crypto, stock markets, and of course, real estate. Links in the top of the video description for everything that I'm talking about here, in particular TIA Premium. Join the members over there, setting up their trading plans and their long-term investing plans for financial freedom. All right, guys. This is the theory that has continued to play out year after year. If you guys have been following the channel, thank you very much for your loyalty here. 312,000, we're going for 400,000 in 2024. We've been covering this for many, many years because it has uh, accurately forecasted the market almost to the T. Okay, we are about to release another update somewhere around here. Uh, keep a look out for that on X, heading into this bubble, which is called the winner's curse phase. Essentially, everyone's a winner. That's across all markets. And then things get really hot and heavy. You see a lot of profits floating around, people buying ridiculous amounts of crap, and then taking out more loans against their properties and putting it into more and more real estate. So that's typically what happens at this stage of the cycle. Now, we have seen calls of recession. You've got the recession here in the UK, which essentially nine days earlier from the same newspaper telling us why a recession does matter and that it's not a good thing for the PM, for their prime minister. And then nine days later, UK off to a strong start in 2024, despite the recession. So if you have been following, we have talked about the recession through 2022, 2023, well, the non-recession. And even while Germany had a recession, they're hitting new all-time highs in their stock market. Remember, the main thing that we try to do is, well, the main thing we, we can only do is trade the markets, trade the charts and where the charts are going, and they are going up. Yes, they have corrections along the way, and sometimes they get very, very hot, and just everyone's waiting for some sort of correction. But the main thing I wanna point out here is even though you see things about recessions, it doesn't seem like it's the timing yet. We've seen uh, economies start to pick up again. The US, of course, everyone looked for a recession and now they've forgotten about it. Well, they're trying to bring it back, but essentially the markets have continued to go up. So while you wait for that recession, you miss out on the good times. So we've got a couple of big questions to answer here. I wanted to point these out in regards to the newspaper nine days earlier, just trashing the UK's prime minister about the recession. And then nine days later, well, UK's off to a great start. The US is also off to a great start as well, just a huge move to the upside. So eventually, eventually you start to see some sort of correction. But the main thing that I'm looking at here is these corrections being short and shallow. So that sort of leads us to the first question around what if this thing ends early? meaning the bubble, if this everything bubble ends early, what you would need to see is for the stock markets to break down underneath previous old all time highs and then break down past 50% levels. So wherever this top comes in, maybe it's higher up, maybe it's right here, which I doubt, then you would have to see the market break underneath the 50% level and then the macro 50% level as well. So you'd want to start to see it break under and then you go back to that previous cycle back here. So the reason I bring that up is look at that previous cycle we had it into the peak from the COVID crash to that pump up in January 2022. It sat 
dead on 50%. And we have now bounced well and truly away from that level of the October cycle low. So that's basically your safety measures in the market to try and distinguish between these bubble callers, well, the bubble poppers, and if this bubble is going to continue on and in, until which uh, time frame. Time frames roughly around that peak of about 2026. Not saying that it's going to collapse. I know I see that comment all the time. It doesn't mean it just peaks and then collapses the next day. Uh, but just keep an eye out on the charts and the swing charts if they start to break down like they typically do around the peaks on a longer term time frame around your weekly or your monthly. So the strength of the market, just looking at the speed here for the US, uh, I've got this range here which is mimicking this previous range here. So it's just a direct copy of the range out of the March low. Uh, as an update here, we've got a couple more weeks to go. The price is well and truly above where it was pumping in the last move up. So there's strength in that move. That's what you want to keep seeing as well. So these little subtle signs, you're seeing price move further in the same amount of time, meaning there is much more buying activity. The NASDAQ, it's basically dead on schedule here. So you can see it's the same line. And as we've been covering, this one is slightly weaker compared to the S&P 500. But in terms of the previous move to the upside, it's basically on track. So I'm not too concerned with either of these, especially with the S&P just pushing much, much higher. These other lines I've got on the chart here basically represent the previous moves up. You've got January uh, 2016 to 2022. You've got the other move up to the peak of 2020. And then that really fast run out of the low for the COVID collapse into that massive stimulus. That's this line here. So it's uh, we're underneath that at the moment, but it looks like we're trying to play catch up to that same speed out of the low when all of that money printing happened compared to now when there's not as much money printing going on at all. But we're seeing banks create the credit. That's specifically what we told everyone here on the channel back in 2022 when they started tightening the money printing, we said it doesn't matter about the money printing. It can come from many different sources. It can come from the government, not printing the money, but just easing taxes. There's more money floating around now. They could be, uh, the banks could be easing credit and that's the credit cycle. Some of you guys, I've seen that in the comments. So it's good that people are picking up on that, but the masses miss it all the time because they get focused on money printing. If the money printer turns off, that's it, shows over. No, it's not about just the money printer, you've got the credit cycle and they are making credit easier now. That is part of this stage of the cycle. And where that's, that's potentially another reason why these markets keep going up. The uh, credit creation is getting easier at this stage. So that's the S&P 500 update, NASDAQ update, also like dead on track here. The US dollar is basically dead on the 50% level. So we need some more time to see whether this is going to start to fall again. And of course, if the US dollar starts to come back a little bit, maybe that's going to give the assets like the S&P 500 and, and Bitcoin a little more room to move. So we'll keep an eye on the uh, US dollar. Uh, at the moment, basically dead on the 50% level. So waiting to see whether it's time for it to break down here to come back and test 102, or if we come back up and test 105. Dead in the middle there. Let's move on to something like gold, which we haven't covered in a while. Now gold is sitting above the $2,000 level, above the 50% level from that October low to the peak that came in in December. That exact peak, remember the media, they went ballistic. Everyone talking about gold, buy gold, buy gold, huge reversal, and it hasn't been at that price since December. So it's basically a couple of months now where it has not been back at December 2023 prices. Good news for gold holders, at least, is the price is holding up above 50%. Then the next thing they want to see is a clean break of that specific level there, roughly about $2,090. So a nice clean break on your swing chart holding above that. That's going to show more strength to uh, gold and then potential more upside as well, which leads us to Bitcoin. So I've covered the US dollar, covered gold. Now, of course, the best thing out there, Bitcoin, and what happens in those collapses. So this all sort of ties in with the, uh, the, the bubble and this bubble booming, exploding. And then what do you do with your money once the bubble collapses? Where do you put it? So I know I always refer back to the media and the masses because typically the majority of people do the wrong things at the wrong time, which is why most people lose in the market. Looking at currency, so there's another big narrative that gets pushed, only hold Bitcoin, at least for the Bitcoiners like us, and 
cash is trash. That became headlines at the peak in 2022. Go back and look at your news articles. We definitely covered it here on the channel as well. You had big names at the time, Ray Dalio, cash is trash. Now he may have said that back at uh, other periods in time when the market was at the low and he was saying, get rid of your cash, get into the markets. Maybe that's what he said there, but it becomes headlines at the peaks so that people get rid of their cash at the peaks. So stay very up to date with what they're saying out there. You can see here, cash is trash. I mean, the rest of the world is basically trash compared to the US dollar. It's all been down against the US dollar. So in the case of corrections, US dollar is actually king. Cash is king. And the US dollar is probably going to have more strength compared to the majority. Of course, there's 100 odd currencies. We, don't, we can't cover every single one and tell you exactly which one to invest in. That's why just as a broad idea here, cash is king when you need to start taking profits because eventually everything becomes cheaper against the dollar. So although we're Bitcoin maxis, we're crypto maxis, we're altcoin degenerates, when markets do come down, you probably want to be holding some of that cash. You probably want to be holding some of that stable coin as well. As for BTC, the trend is unconfirmed, but essentially it's up. The reason I say unconfirmed, you got higher highs, lower lows until this puts in another low and then starts to break higher. That would be the confirmation of an uptrend. However, we're seeing that the price has basically been sitting in this area for 10 days. And in the previous uh, video, I suggested on a more macro sense here, you'd have to lean to the upside for BTC, even if there was a short-term breakdown uh, because of the strength of this market. So if we did get a pullback, we've been measuring these, we're at about 4.5% to the downside here, so 47 down to the 50%, if 53K, nice even number there, is the top, that would bring us down to about 13.5%, maybe 14% correction, takes us out to the previous tops as well. So a nice, uh, a good looking area for support and resistance to hold if it is to correct. There's a roughly 15% back to 45K. Now to the lows here at 38, 39,000, that's about 26.5%. So that would be the biggest correction that Bitcoin would have done in this entire move. Seems relatively unlikely considering the strength of the market at the moment. Corrections, of course, they come and go. The main thing that we're looking at here for the bubble is the downside doesn't seem to be as big as what it has been in the past. Anyone looking for a 40% correction back to these highs, probably not going to happen based on the strength of the market. And if it was to break under those levels, this move is most likely over. That would mean that that's the peak there, game over. Doesn't matter how much you try and accumulate here, the market's probably gonna go back and test the lower prices if, now hear me there, don't just clip certain areas, if the market was to break down from these previous highs of 32K. That's why I'm pretty adamant that we're not going to go back uh, to 31 and a half, 32K, which is a 40% correction. A 30% correction, it's not impossible. It'd take us back into the mid 30. So another reasonable area there as we lead into the halving. As we lead into that halving, we're also seeing Ethereum with a ton of strength. Now, why is there a lot of strength? Well, people keep pointing to the Denkun upgrade. Hope I didn't get canceled off YouTube for that. Essentially, ETH against Bitcoin is looking relatively strong. We've been covering this now on the channel for quite some time. So make sure you do hit that like button. Do that as soon as you get on the video. It's much easier. And in terms of the 50% level, we've got a little bit further to go to cement this move as a, a confirmed move to the upside. Otherwise, well, we could be testing further downside. Remember, that's the issue that we have with all trading and investing, no matter what it is. The closer you try and get to the bottom, the higher risk it has of failing, but the lower risk you have of losing so much cash. Meaning, if you wait for higher prices, unless you got stops closer to the market and your stops are further down, you risk losing more money if you wait for that lower price, but you have more confirmation that the move is likely to continue in the direction of your trade. There, that's the way off every single time, no matter what you are trading. So in terms of ETH BTC, we're looking relatively good here. Let's have a look at ETH USD first. Uh, uh, we only had one, two, three, four, five, six days before we broke out on the seventh. So a nice consolidation above, guess what? The 50% level, 2,917. This is the uh, importance and 
the strength of these levels. Now, this 50% level is from the cycle low in June, 880 bucks to the top, $4,950. So a nice clean 50% level straight through the middle there. Seven days uh, above it without, yep, without a close below it. And now we've pushed away again on, I think it was on the seventh day. So yeah, we've had seven days of closing above that level. Pretty good sign so far. What you wouldn't want to see is of course this week break down underneath 29 and then start to close under those previous levels. That would be relatively weak for ETH. It would need a lot more time to digest the move, accumulate, and then attempt that move again sometime later in the year, which is still possible. We haven't had enough time uh, closes above this level on the weekly chart yet. We've had this one week so far. The next level above is 3590, call it 3600 for a round number. So that's what ETH looks like it wants to run into as we lead into the Denkan upgrade. So this is designed to reduce costs for layer two transactions. Basically everyone complaining about how expensive Ethereum is. Well, this is designed to help improve those costs. Now that is due on the 13th Denkan upgrade, 13th of March here. Uh, another few more days to go, a couple of weeks to go really. And these are the levels that we are watching. You've got a dotted line here at about 6 million Satoshi. Now, if this is a little bit foreign to you, don't worry. Just look at the 0 0.06. You just want to see the percentage of Ethereum's value against BTC's value. So if you did 6%, which is where the current price is, it's 6% of uh, Bitcoin's value would give you the, the price of Ethereum at $3,100. That's essentially all this is, okay? So in terms of the upside closes, it's hitting the first target now, which is basically these tops. You wanna see it close above this level, so above six to 6.1%. And then our two levels above are at a, uh, this white line here, so the lows, that's 65, so 6.5 million Satoshis, 6.5%, same thing. And more importantly, 6.8, so 0 0.068. So for the strength of Ethereum, ideally, in a best case scenario, that would cement the bottom in for my own analysis here. That's what I've talked about here in this post on uh, X. So if it was to get there, that's basically saying this low is in. ETH BTC is probably seen the cycle low now, and that it is, that is it right there at 4.8? You can see down the bottom here. And that would mean that, well, there's a fair bit more strength in Ethereum this cycle compared to last cycle. Not that this time is different because everything plays out the same with the rules, but you're just looking at the differences in strength and weakness. Remember, not every cycle has to be the same weakness over and over again, which leads us to the strength and the weakness of altcoins. As I said in the intro about the questions and the timing here for altcoins, if the old coins are actually stronger this cycle. How are we getting into these? So Michael's done a fantastic video here. I'll leave a link to his channel in the video description along with everything else down there. Subscribe to our free crypto and economic report coming out in about 30 hours. So basically tomorrow, subscribe to that. That'll come out to your inboxes. So Michael's gone through eight altcoins here, just looking at the possibility of some of these rolling over in price. Nothing major, but possibly some reasonable entries there. Check that out after this, after we look at the timing now for the macro altcoin cycle here. And what I've got is the total crypto market cap minus Bitcoin minus ETH and excluding all stable coins as well. Now this is our TIA uh, uh, indicator here, which you can gain access to here. Seven day free trial at the top. So the point that we're looking at here is where roughly are we in the cycle and if this is the case, then what do we, if this is the case of the strength in altcoins right now, what do we anticipate seeing moving forward over, I guess, roughly the next sort of 40-ish weeks leading us into the end of the year? So what I've got here on the chart is the low, uh, the correction low. Now, this is the COVID crash low. So if that wasn't to happen, you'd probably still see some sort of correction in there, some sort of correction around uh, February or March, but it may not have been as low and it might have been a higher low, which would then ease the market uh, to come up a little bit higher quicker. But nonetheless, just looking at the timings here of the turning points, not the severity of the drops, which I know some people get hung up on. I'm not looking at a COVID crash here, just the turning points. We've got the low to a little peak here. This cycle was about 28 weeks. Now you've got the cycle low to the first peak in June, roughly 28 weeks. So it wasn't the 
the overall peak before it demise, but you still had a significant peak before it fell into the September low, which was a very important low for this altcoin market. And of course, Bitcoin as well. Now we had uh, roughly 53 weeks low to the turning point low here in December before that rally, which potentially could have been the, the next higher low for altcoins if the COVID collapse didn't happen. Uh, in terms of 50-ish weeks, there's 56. That is this one right here. All right, that one takes us to the current low that we just saw. So they're, t they're lining up with some significant lows in the current cycle, except this time around, we're seeing more strength in the altcoins than we did in the previous cycle. One reason, obviously, COVID crashed there. The other reason is maybe we saw a lot more scams in the market back in uh, 2017. I suggest there was a lot more scams back then, tons of ICOs, tons of scammy uh, companies out there. I just watched BitCon on Netflix the other night. Maybe you've seen it. But yeah, absolute scammers. And they're, they're going to come back again. It's just a matter of trying to avoid those massive scams. On with the time analysis here. So if we are roughly around this point here, you can see some of these timings working out as well with significant turn points from that low to the breakout now. So the breakout of the tops and the following several weeks of reaccumulation at a higher price, not so much of a significant correction there in roughly January of 2021. Basically, everything was getting ready to boom after the first move out. Then you had that next boom. You had about 49 weeks, so basically a year from that point. So we've got a few numbers now to look at. You can see that things have been timing out all right. So we have our next time frame here of 100, and that is from the low to the breakout point. There is our low, potentially looking at the timing here for the breakout in roughly, call it November, December which lines up with the timing for the election coming in November, the pump out from that side. Maybe Bitcoin gets a new all-time high like it did last time, just slightly early or around that particular timing for the, the markets. And that also springboards the altcoins into new fresh highs as well. And so the reason I'm looking much further up the chart than we did last time is that we had the accumulation and then the breakout earlier on, whereas we had the accumulation back here and we weren't able to break out until this point. The timings of the peaks and the troughs were still roughly on track, except this time around, things are looking a little bit more healthy here in terms of the breakout. Uh, that could also be another reason of um, having more altcoins with bigger market caps, which might even be great projects. Maybe a Solana could uh, do it this time. You've got other projects which have been putting in a, a lot bigger gains earlier on than what we had in the previous cycle coming out of that December low. The gain started to happen nine to 12 months later as it broke out uh, through September into that sort of December, January period. So if that is the case, and maybe we have 40-ish uh, weeks left until that final reaccumulation above the previous tops before that breakout to a new all-time high, what the hell do you do in this period? Well, you can see in the previous period, you had a pullback. I'm not saying we're going to get this massive one, but there could have been a pullback here. Another pause and hold, pause and hold, slight pullback, pause and a pause. So the main thing is if you keep seeing higher lows forming on this particular chart, they look like the areas to be accumulating the altcoins that you want to hold into this boom stage of the cycle, into this explosive move to the upside. These pullbacks that we're seeing are probably those times to get in and they're not as deep as many are expecting. So in the period where the market is correcting, as Michael's looking at here on this particular video, going through eight of the major altcoins, have a look at the corrections. You want to look at the 50% levels for one and then some of these particular corrections. We only had roughly 25% correction this time around. So the shortest is roughly 25%. The longest here is about 38, 40-ish percent. So from those peaks, if you start to see it come down, could be somewhere in that vicinity of sort of 20 to 40% corrections. And maybe we're not seeing the 60 or 80% corrections like we did in the previous cycle coming out of that low where markets basically pulled back about 80% uh, from those peaks, so 60 to 80%. And this time around, they're a little bit shallower because of the strength of the move out of this accumulation area to the upside. 
One final spanner in the works is of course the halving. What happens after this point? Well, we only have about six weeks, seven weeks to go to find out. So stay tuned to those 50% levels and the swing charts. They're gonna give you those early indications whether the market is just getting ready to roll over and come back for a healthy correction. But the main thing that, are, that we can note from the previous cycles is after this stage, forget the COVID collapse. The halving happened around here in May the pullbacks have all been relatively shallow. So I think it might be prudent to uh, have a look for shallower pullbacks, but nothing in the vicinity of 60 or 80%, depending on how high your crypto has pumped. That's going to be the main uh, signal here. And if we're just watching the total cryptocurrency market cap for altcoins, so excluding Bitcoin, ETH and stablecoins, then you can have a clearest uh, picture of where these lows might be coming in in terms of the timing and the price range of the corrections here for the altcoin market cap. Now, we also had Link to get through looking at Bitcoin returns to the upside, dollar returns to the upside, all these sorts of multiples looking at 10Xs and 5Xs. But gonna, I'm going to leave that to a video for tomorrow as this video has gone on long enough. So hit the like and subscribe. Make sure you've got notifications turned on with that bell so you know when this video is posted tomorrow. We'll continue to follow up with ETH and its mega, mega pump here past $3,100 so far on the channel. See you in the next one. Till then, take care and peace out.